Hi, welcome to another episode of My Indie Film and Focus. Today we have the pleasure of bringing on Harley Wallen to the show. I mean, if, you, if you're a fan of the Michigan film industry, you know who this guy is. He's not as the, just an actor, producer, director, writer. I mean, uh, M- MMA fighter. What, what don't you do, Harley? Um, uh, sleep? Sleep is one of them, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> not a lot. Um, yeah, I, I mean, but the thing is, even though I do a lot of a lot of stuff, I'm doing a lot of stuff that I love. There you go. So it doesn't feel like I'm working, even though I've never worked harder in my life. <laughs> <laughs> I tell people that all the time. I mean, that's the great thing about working in film. Like, I don't feel like I'm working, but man, is it hard work. Oh uh, yeah. You know, and especially set. I mean, when you're on set, when you're shooting, uh, those days. I mean, it's 12-hour turnaround, 12-hour days every single time. And uh, and you run over, uh, so it's not just a twelve-hour day. It's, 14, it's a twelve-hour yeah. day, and sometimes thirteen, sometimes fourteen. Mm-hmm. We've gone fifteen a couple times, and they'll they'll get you. Oh yeah, sixteen. I think I did sixteen on Roadkill, man. Mm-hmm. Wow, that was a uh, that was crazy. Yeah. Um, so what got you in this crazy business? How how'd you get a start in this wild industry we work in? Oh God, I well, first of all, my mom says when I was five years old. I was watching Tarzan on TV. <laughs> I was climbing the entertainment center. And I said, when I grow up, I'm going to move to America and I'm going to be a movie star like Tarzan. Awesome. And it was like, she still, every day, she's like, you know, when we talk, she's like, do you remember that? And I'm like, I don't remember that at all, at all. I had the dream but since that birth. was it. Uh, 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 but as far as getting into it, so when I was younger, I was a martial artist and a break dancer. Those were the two things that I really did. And I thought I wanted to make music because I have a very musical family and uh, I felt very called with that. So I recorded some songs. They went to the Cannes music market. Wow. Uh, 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 I just never quite got bit. But in the midst of all that, uh, because I was also a break dancer, I ended up getting a call to a cult TV show that was syndicated all over Sweden, actually all over Scandinavia, uh, called Sul Stolama. And on that show, they had musical guests and they had us uh, dancers to kind of move set and whatever else uh, and, and to do the entertainment because most of the guests that came in were, you know, Samantha Fox and these oh, wow. type of things. Yeah. Okay. It's so, 80s then. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Late, Break yeah, dancing, yeah. of course, boom boxes yeah. and uh, cardboard boxes. Exactly. <laughs> that was exactly it. But instead of hiring actors for their one and two liners, they would come in and ask us and they'd say, Hey, who wants to come and buy, you know, tanning lotion from the store? And I'm like, I'll do it. So you get a (laughs) script and you hang out with the actors and then you realize acting is like not just pretending it's a lot more. And you start talking to the actors and you just get, I got sucked in. Mm -hmm. I, I couldn't let it go. I went and got myself into an acting class. I got myself an acting coach and, wow. and it just took me over. And this so, is why wow. you're still overseas. Still in Sweden, yeah. Wow. Yeah. So when did you come to America, man? I moved here in 94. Oh, wow. So, yeah. so 14 years, around 14 years after, you got your start in, in television over there. Uh, no, no, yeah, no, that, uh, yeah, no, that we, that was late eighties. Late eighties. So okay. Okay. Not, not that long. Uh, I'm thinking like 83, like break in and yeah. I, I love that. So I mean, 86 was, it was my year. I'm like, just, I was probably like fifth grade beastie boys and that's like funny. skateboarding yeah. and break oh, dancing. Yeah, that's, beastie boys, yeah, that's what, love, I mean, we love. were all doing that skateboarding yeah. and break dancing. And I, all, all my fighting career, I walked out to a King of Rock by Run DMC. There you go, right? That was Dev my Jam. walkout song every single time. <laughs> <laughs> that's awesome. Yeah. So, so the acting bug got you, and that's how you got involved in film. Mm-hmm. Uh, what was your first project here in Michigan? Ooh, first project as an actor uh, was, and I don't remember the name of the film, but I it was a, a black and white, very artsy film where I played uh, an American silent film. Oh, wow. Uh, I played uh, an American caught behind enemy lines during the Second World War. Oh, that's interesting. Uh, uh, on, on Germany's side or uh, Japan? Uh, uh, in, in Germany. In so Germany, I was okay. an, an okay. American soldier in Germany caught behind wow. uh, enemy lines. Yeah. So that was really interesting. Uh, and uh, the guy who made uh, the film, Charles Inumo, I think his name was, uh, used to be uh, uh, with Columbia Pictures and retired 
and started doing his own. He built all these models and everything else. And, wow. and he shot everything, a very, very artsy guy and uh, very clear vision. I remember it was, it was, it was a lot of fun. That, that sounds amazing. So like, uh, well, I kind of skipped over you coming to America. How yeah, the hell did yeah. you get here, man? So I, funny enough, entered something called the American Visa Lottery. Uh, I had been here a gazillion times. Uh, pretty much I would get a visa. I'd, I'd fly over here. I'd stay for as long as I could. Uh, and then when I ran out of money, I would fly back to Sweden again. And then I would work real hard and come over here again. Couldn't work here, so I was getting frustrated. So I entered the American Visa Lottery, um, which it's a funny name for something that you, when you win it, you have to prove everything uh, as far as actually getting the price. So I won. So 55,000 people each year win this lottery. And this lottery, when you win, you now have to go through a background check. Uh, oh, wow. They have to do a, a physical, they do a, a psychological evaluation. Like you have to jump through a million hoops to get here. And then you have to find an employer in the U.S. that guarantees you a job for at least one year. Before you leave. Before I can even come here. Wow. So, so you jump through Extremely all these difficult. hoops. Yeah. But, I, but, I, but I finally got here and... Uh, and uh, because that's what I wanted. I mean, the audience in Sweden and the and the hierarchy of the film industry in Sweden um, is not the same as here. It's not as open and and it's not as as welcoming to uh, to new blood and and everything else. It's very much uh, you know a club. Hmm. So uh, I was happy to come here and have the opportunity. And initially, I really went after it. I had a, a, an agency in Toronto, one in New York, one in Chicago. So Michigan was like the perfect sweet spot for me. <clears throat> but, uh, you know, you have kids and you have life and all those dreams get to put on the back burner for quite a while. And, uh, and then I started thinking about it. And this was only probably seven, eight years ago when I decided I wanted to get back into this again. I was, I retired from fighting and I felt like I want to do something hmm. for my soul again. There you because go. the fighting was moving out. I was still doing the commentary, but not the same thing. So for me um, to, to get back into acting was, was the thing. And then Michigan killed the incentives. Yeah, and, didn't it? And uh, I said, who is going to make sure that anything of quality comes out of Michigan? Um, at the time, our indie circuit was not very good. I mean, there was... Yeah, it was a lot of bumps in the road, that's for sure. Yeah. You know, we built that infrastructure, and that's what, you know, we really needed to do, um, yeah. you know, get it established. Uh, and, and that's unfortunately, they took it away, because, I, like I said, I was working uh, two weeks out of graduating respects. So I didn't even have a degree in this yet. Yeah. And, uh, you know, I was working at, at Jackie Kagan's talent shop, mm -hmm. uh, and we were, uh, you know, indirectly working on all the Michigan indies, and... Um, Man, you you got exciting. Uh, we haven't even broke the ice. Um, I I wanted to talk about so much more. Yeah. Uh, we're gonna show a trailer for Ash and Bone, um, which um, you can it's, uh, you can watch it right now, yeah, right? It's available. Right now, Apple TV, uh, Vudu, uh, Prime. It's on uh, iTunes and yeah, it's it's pretty much anywhere where you can where you can buy. Uh, pay-per-views uh, live stream it yep. so uh we're gonna take a break we're gonna watch that trailer and we'll come back with uh harley wallen thanks What do you guys do for fun around here? You're looking at it. No haunted cemeteries? Maybe an old barn or something? There is the McKinley. Where is it? People around here don't really like to talk about it. They're creepy. They're creepy. 
Well, we do have our share of issues out here, Mr. Vanderbilt. But do you know the story about William Dell? Real still. You try anything, and I'll cut your daughter's head off with a pair of scissors, and she will feel every second of it. She's, She's really getting under my skin. Welcome back to, from the break. I, I really hope you liked that trailer from Ash and Bone. Uh, Ash and Bone. We're back with uh, Harvey Wallen, and uh, we were talking. Man, like I, I like I said, I missed so many opportunities to ask you so many more questions. Um, Ash and Bone. What a really cool like. I I got such a Wes Craven like Last House on the Left. Toby Hooper's uh, the Texas Chainsaw Massacre vibe mm-hmm. from it. Um, Michigan talent. Such a, such a great movie. How'd you get hooked up with 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 the uh, writer? Uh, uh, what's his name? Brett. Um... Brett Miller. Brett Miller. Was, okay. Yeah, he was my first AD on a film a while ago. Uh, I think it was uh, probably Eternal Code. And uh, funny enough, I didn't even know he was a writer, but that's primarily what he does. Okay. Uh, he's a writer director, so um, so he understands storytelling pretty well. Uh, come in. <laughs> uh, so he understands storytelling, and uh, and I, it's funny that you mentioned the the because those were inspirations for for the film. Um, we definitely thought of, of Texas Chainsaw Massacre. We thought of uh, uh, the Hills Have Eyes, uh, and like you said, Last House on the Left. And Wes Craven is very much a big influence. I I, uh, I tried to tip my hat to to the filmmakers that came before me that influenced me. So I did Agramon's Gate. Agramon's Gate has, uh, um, you know, I love The Exorcist. I love uh, Poltergeist. And oh, the, nice. The demons and the occult. So that was that was my nod to, to them, the mystery part of horror. Ash and Bone, although it has mystery to it, it's a much more of a backyards. Um, Visceral you know, movie, it is, yeah. Yeah, it's, 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 pretty, it's pretty spicy. Um, I think we balanced it out pretty well with we don't I don't like bathing people with buckets of blood and 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 I like telling a story. That's right. Oh I yeah, no, it wasn't overly gory. Like that's the thing that's the misconception with Toby Hooper's Texas Chainsaw Massacre. Oh, it was a bl- there's no. not a lot of blood in that movie at all. No. You know, it's more like her open top back yep. that you see and then when he puts her on the hook it's like, yep. "Oh, how did they do that?" Yeah. You know, mm-hmm. um your movie definitely wasn't over the top gory. I thought it was I thought it was very well told. Uh the actors, oh my god, uh Erica and Jimmy Doom. The, the, oh, the yeah. Said, yeah, wow. Can we talk a little bit about that whole experience? Absolutely. That was <laughs> that was so much fun. First of all, when we started making this, everybody thought that they were going to be speaking Southern accents. So we went to the table read and they were speaking Southern accents. I'm like, no, 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 no. This takes place in Michigan. Right. And they're like, oh, oh, yeah. I'm like, youpers. Yeah. And they're like, eh? oh, <laughs> eh? so we had to figure all that thing out. Um, the, we we looked at the makeup that we were gonna do. Uh, the edginess of of the characters, though, um, I think they filled them in very very nicely. I think I had a really good start to the characters, but they really filled them in. Uh, I could, I couldn't even tell you how many people that don't even recognize Erica in the film. Yeah. Oh, yeah, of, right. I mean, she sat in a, in a makeup chair for an hour and a half before we started every day t- to get that look, like her teeth, her rat hair. And, yeah. I mean, she doesn't look like herself She's a very at attractive all. young lady, right? Yes, yes she they, is. they definitely brought her down a little bit with the makeup, yeah. Yeah. You made her that, uh, <laughs> th- th- that backwoods kind of yeah. scary, whoa, what's going on here? Like, uh, and th- I don't want to give away too much, but man, I, you won't be disappointed uh the, the the family turmoil too so it's like a yeah it's like a, a, a coming like it was like what a weird combination of a a bringing the family back together mixed in with a little bit of horror like i was like well yeah. this is a 
it almost felt like a coming of age story for the daughter. You know what yep. I mean? Like it was like, oh yeah, you know, no, definitely. I mean, but I think about that a lot because the the disconnect between especially teenagers and parents, um, where the teenager doesn't understand the parent because the parent has so much responsibility, but the parent doesn't understand the teenager. They're shaping themselves and becoming and blooming and uh, and they're very subjective and very uh, self-centered because they have to be. Right. Um, they don't so, know who they so, are. So that, yeah, that, so I wanted that dynamic playing out. And I remember the first draft from Brett, I went, oh my goodness, Lord, this is good. Hmm. And uh, we, I think we shot version five nice so we made it through five rewrites of that um uh but but that script i i really really enjoy it wonder how many times he rewrote it till you got to the first version right um sure. alex alex so alex is your dp and he edited the film right yes. how do you say his last name i don't want to uh, slaughter it i did gasparetto gasparetto okay yeah alex has been with me who uh he was the first AD slash editor on, uh, no, he was scripty and, and uh, an editor on Agramon's Gate. Oh, wow. And then stepped in to be my DP on, uh, I think it was Bennett Song Holiday, and then stayed with us since. So Bennett Song Holiday, Ash and Bone, Tale of Tales, and Beneath Us All. So Oh, wow. So, so he's got a good run with it now. Films. Nice. Yeah. Yeah, uh, so what I like with, with Alex is that he is he has the mind of a director and the eye of a cinematographer. So a, as, a, a, as an actor-director, it really gives me peace to step in front of the camera right. for my role because I trust him. Mm -hmm. I trust that he will go, hey, Harley... That, didn't like that, yeah. Yeah. He's and, not ashamed to tell you no. Yes, and that's the thing, too. Joe Victor, my first AD, mm -hmm. him, Brett. I have several director eyes on me. Uh, you know, when I step in front of the camera, I have several people that I bounce scripts off of that have that pedigree. Um, I, I see one of the Michigan, uh, and it's probably not just Michigan, it's probably a common thing, but to the filmmakers out there, out there, Stop thinking that you have the next best thing since sliced bread with your scripts. Share them with your team, proof them, poke at them, and get them worked out. Otherwise, you end up with plot holes everywhere. Right. And then you go, oh, yeah, have your good, circle good, good, poke yep. at them. Because I've seen too many films uh, where I'm like, how did nobody catch that in the, in the script? Right. And there's a lot of hands to go through too, right? You know, what I mean, a lot of people have read that script. Should uh, I, yeah. I, when I'm AD, I'm I'm I've read it five, six, seven, eight, ten times. Yeah. As many times as it takes for me to get yeah. it. And once I get it, I'm like, okay, now I can flesh it out, yeah. start writing everything I need. It, you know, that, you're right. It 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 is. You know, and, it, and it's and, and a lot of it. I think it's ego. Yes. You know, where people say, hey, you know, oh, it's my, you know, how could it be bad? Sometimes it's you know that you need fresh eyes. Yes. You know, as an editor, as a director, as a any I kind of couldn't creative. tell you how many times somebody else read a script, especially when I was writing them myself. But but I've seen it even even with Finding Nicole, we had dates all over the place that we had to fix because when we wrote, I think uh, my writer for for Finding Nicole, he would he would write essentially decide that we was this date and that date. And then use those, uh, and they didn't match up. Mm. And I had to go, oh, hang on, we have to fix this. Gosh, and then that's uh, you know that's the thing about filmmaking. You know, it's a collaborative art form, and it takes a, it takes a village. It takes a village to raise a family. It Amen. takes a village to make a movie. Yes, you it know, does. Um, beneath us all. So we're gonna go to a trailer of this. Pretty excited to see. So I, I haven't seen this trailer yet. Um, so when I edit this, I, I'll, I'll have watched it, but. Uh, Sounds like fun. Hold off for a minute. We'll be right back. Thanks for watching. Mindy Film and Focus. I want you all to remember Julie here. She's been a great example for your kids. In more ways than one. This is not a punishment, Rebecca. You are the brightest social worker we have. 
it might be best for everyone if we reassign you to Oakland County. We've had over 50 kids come to this home. Joey! Why don't you just adopt them? Neither my husband nor I have ever touched that girl. Something happened at the Gibbs' place. Why didn't you come home? Something in the woods. There is no man living in the woods. It is simply not true. There was this feeling oh. like I was bringing something bad back with me. I don't want to go in there. I need fresher meat. Free? The more I feel, the stronger I get. <laughs> I don't want to be here. You can't save everyone. Stop it! His pride proved to be toxic for all of you. Welcome back from the break. I hope you enjoyed the trailer for uh, Beneath Us All with Sean Whalen. Uh, talk a little bit about uh, how that's going for you right now. Well, it's going great, uh, and I, I'm, I'm definitely not looking forward to the media of that with Sean Whalen and Harley Wallen, because you know they're going to butcher it, and yeah. we're going to be both be Whalens and Wallens, and it's going to be an interesting trip. But yeah, actually, I'm heading to uh, AFM, which is the American Film Market in Santa Monica. I'm heading out, uh, uh, I don't know when this airs, but uh, Halloween? I'm heading at Halloween, and I'll be there through November 5th. So uh, not only am I going to be there uh, for Halloween, but I'm going to be there for my birthday and my 10-year wedding anniversary. Oh, wow. And but, when, uh, when is that, by the way? Are you, uh, are you my Scorpio? My 10-year wedding anniversary is the 2nd, November 2nd. My birthday is November 4th. Oh, wow. My son's born on the 4th. Oh, really? Yeah, that's amazing. Wow. You're Scorpio, Tell huh? Happy birthday. I will, man. Yeah. I, well, now I know. You're locked in. Now your memory warehouse is locked in. I'm going to send yeah. you a message on Facebook or something, man. Yeah. That's pretty like, exciting, though. So you're getting ready very. to sell that damn movie, huh? Yes. And and I think, you know, I, I, have, uh, I, have, I have Sean Whalen in it. I have Jan Birch in it. Reuniting them for the first time since uh, the people under the I stairs. I love that movie, right? And then Maria West Olson. Craven? Oh yeah, was a huge influence of mine. Uh, uh, and Maria Olson from, I mean, she's in All the I Spit on Your Grave, I think. Yeah. And then she is in uh, the Percy and the Olympians. Like she's in so many good films. She's in uh, there too, huh? Yeah. Nice. Yeah, fantastic cast. Fantastic. Wow, pretty exciting. So and uh, then, uh, uh, we met on the set of Finding Nicole, and yeah. I actually. Don't even have a film yet, but I have several offers on that film. So I'm going to I'm going to see what's out there uh, when it comes to to probably won't sign that film just yet because we have higher goals and aspirations for that. But uh, get it out there. Yeah, get it out there. Get the buzz. And we were out here at the PKSA Mm -hmm. PKSA uh, karate here in Oxford. Uh, My boss, Terry, uh, the station manager, sent me up there and said, hey, uh, they're making a movie over here. You want to go in there? She knows I, I work in the, the Michigan film industry. She's like, go check them out. And I, I walked in there. I seen uh, Bomb. Uh, uh, Matt, uh, oh, yeah. Yeah, Matt, I was like, hey. And uh, uh, Matt said, who's the producer? She, oh, that's, she's uh, Nicole right there. I said, the, is that the Nicole the movie's about? He's like, yeah. So I went and introduced myself and started talking to her and was like, wow, I'm pretty excited. And what a great story yeah. she has, man. Um, the, the Enough Initiative and, and everything that she's doing. Um, if you haven't seen that episode of uh, Our Community Access, you can always go back and look at it. These guys are on it. Um, what a wonderful woman, man. How was that yeah. the whole thing working with her, man? Well, it, it's one of them things that's always a little scary is when you have someone's baby and they have to give it to somebody else for it to grow up. Um, you're always nervous as a because I was involved in the writing and, and obviously I'm one of the main producers and I'm the director. So taking somebody else's baby, you never know how they're going to handle it. She has handled it about as good as anyone. Wow. Uh, and, and she's been so collaborative and so engaged with us uh, throughout the whole process of making this. Uh, she literally came to our casting decisions. She watched all the finalists for all the roles oh, wow. uh, with us and, 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 and had her five cents on, on casting as well. And uh, yeah, I mean, she's been fantastic to work with. That's authentic. I, I, I wish she right. had more stories to tell uh, because it's been, and not only that, but it's, um, it's so important to tell the story 
because of how impactful this is. And I know that there's been plenty of films made about domestic violence, but I think sometimes it gets lost in the Hollywood thing. The machinery eats stuff up. I think we touch on the rawness of it. We really show um, some of the difficulties of getting out that people don't think about. And, and I think that's uh, why this movie is so important uh, for us to tell. And it's important to me because I grew up, I was a kid in a domestic violence household. Mm. So for me, I had, to, I had to kind of figure that thing out myself. It's really weird too because I'm not the... I'm 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 made like the Gen X. I'm I'm right. so it. Yeah. We don't it, cry. You know, we show don't do emotion. anything. Yeah. Like, right. Uh, and it's not that I, I'm. This is the man thing. It's not. It's that just, we're not I, capable of not a robot. It's just right. not pro- productive. Mm-hmm. So if it's not productive, I just don't engage with it. So I've gone my whole life without dealing with that ever. And then this film drops on my lap, and I go, Oh shoot. I'm going to have to figure this out yeah, now. Force you to look at it, yeah. Um, and, and it's been good processing things uh, for me. I, I, I've really enjoyed getting to the other side of this. And it's important, right? Because like, I, I worked on a film where we were dealing with a, a subject like that, and it was like, you, you can't glamorize it and Hollywood it up, and yeah. you can't sugarcoat it and undersell it either, because then yep. you're going to piss off the people that it happens yep. to. You know, and it's a, it's, that's a gray area and a thin line to walk, man. It is a very thin line to walk because first things first, if you portray Nicole at all as if she had anything to do with a monster almost killing her on multiple occasions, there are people that will say, well, look how she's dressing. She deserves it. Look at yeah. how she's talking. She deserves mm. that exists. So in the film, Nicole has to walk that that line, and and because if you if you sway too far off, if you talk too aggressive, if you're too assertive, or if you didn't make a good enough breakfast, or whatever it may be, there are people that will say, "Oh, well, it's what you get for not," you know what I mean? Mm, that's sad. That's a it, sad it world, scary. man. But we're changing, and that's we what are. this movie is about. You know? Yes. And we have been. I mean, you look at everything that we're doing, and I think sometimes we get a little too far ahead of ourselves, and uh, and 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 we're punishing people a little too harshly, and we're not and we're not aware enough. It's when we've we've seen these people now who are you know in their seventies and eighties get clobbered for saying something stupid. If you saw how they grew up and the world they lived in, you have to understand that that it's going to be hard mm-hmm. for some changes to occur. And and if you're actively engaging in something that is destructive or, 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 or uh, hurtful, that has to change. But if you are a bit insensitive because you lack awareness or, or, or you're uninformed, we have to help people with that a little bit. Yeah, because help them grow. Yeah. Man, it's been wonderful talking to you. I wish I, I wish my show was an hour long. Cause <laughs> I know that we could go that long at least, man. We'll uh, have to do it again. It's been a pleasure, after, absolutely. After uh, after some time transpires and we have some something good news. new, right? Yeah. yeah. So yeah, good news. We talk about it. Like I said, we were going to drop the trailers. Uh, before we go, uh, how can we get our viewers to, to get some eyes on some of these films? So uh, Tubi and Voodoo has the most that you'll find, and in all honesty, the safest thing to do. Type in my name, Harley like the motorcycle, Wallen, W-A-L-L-E-N. You search that on Voodoo. You search that on Tubi. Uh, they're going to populate. Uh, we're on Freebie as well. Freebie's clumsier to, to navigate, but, but a lot of stuff all over the place. But those two sites especially have a ton of our films. Awesome. Well, thanks for watching another episode of My Indie Film and Focus. Harley, thanks for being on the show. Thanks, we'll Phil. see everybody next time. Thanks. <laughs>